I have a friend who wakes around 3 to 4 a.m. for about an hour, then goes back to sleep. She has suffered some trauma and anxiety. I'm aware that some cultures may differ in sleep patterns. What could be going on here? And I'll extend the question in the private Q&A. So we might want to just touch on this a little bit, and then probably we'll come back to it. Yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like a very normal pattern, actually. Exactly. Um, that yep. a, an unbroken night of sleep is an unusual thing and perhaps not the healthiest thing. There is something to be said for a break in the middle. It's very common that people who have good good sleep cycles do this. And insofar as it's been looked at um, by anthropologists, uh, many hunter-gatherer societies, and I actually don't know if there are exceptions to this. I just don't know how many anthropologists have looked specifically at sleep cycles, but um, several, and I can't recall at the moment which, which people, uh, which peoples, uh, do exactly this. It's usually not quite so late uh, in the night, but they'll, they'll, you know, sitting around, a, sitting around a fire, Yep. Um, go to bed, sleep for three or four hours, and then get up and actually do some some work or just conversation, which is a kind of, of work in many cases, for an hour or two, and then go back to sleep for another three or four hours. And this also apparently is known from some era in second millennial Europe. I can't remember exactly when. I do not know my sort of medieval and Renaissance and Enlightenment European history very well. Um, but there's some evidence that um, many people were doing that then, whenever that exactly then was. Yep. Now I find on a related note that if I am sleeping and I wake up in the middle of the night and I make contact with the clock. Now this is obviously not a natural pattern, but if I figure out what time it is in the middle of the night and there's a bunch of hours left to sleep, Having gone to sleep again, having seen the clock, I tend to wake up at exactly the right moment, mm. so I'm at the right place in my sleep cycle, and that probably has a huge positive impact on all sorts of things. Waking mm -hmm. up in the middle of your sleep cycle because your alarm clock suddenly decided you should be out of bed <laughs> yeah. is um, at least very stressful. Oh, um, it's, it's so damaging. So um, that would have been perfectly possible to do under some but not all circumstances in pre-industrial era uh, where even if you were not sleeping outside, you could easily go outside and look at the moon, the position of yep. the moon. And so this requires that you not only know what the phase of the moon is, but what that phase means about where the moon will be in the sky. And you can't do it as reliably uh, the closer to new it is. Um, but you know, given that the full moon rises approximately at sundown, depending on how close you are to the equator, um, and you know rises an hour-ish, uh, later every every night as it wanes and approaches again um, rising around um, sundown as it approaches full. Um, if you know that, you know, that, you know, that all sounded like a lot of words and how would you exactly form a model of that? Well, of course you would. Anyone who's spent a lot of time outside, you know, doing, say, research in Madagascar or backpacking or just, you know, in the backcountry comes to understand these patterns and you internalize it and it is a clock. It's not, it doesn't have the precision of a clock, um, but it is a clock. Yep. And there are also... Oh, so, sorry. Yep. It, it won't work around the new moon. It won't work with cloud cover. Right. Really. Right. Um, there's also in every place on earth, local patterns, which you couldn't globalize. You mm -hmm. can't say this is the pattern, but they're things that you learn if you're there. I like so, the sounds of birds and insects and such. Yeah. When I was yeah. working on bats, um, when I was radio tracking uh, active bats, you go out at night, you're up all night and the sounds are very different um, at dawn and at dusk and in the middle of the night. And, yeah. you know, you would have some idea how many uh, hours had passed based yeah. on, on what you were hearing. And then, well, like, I mean, like in Every place that I've been in the tropics, uh, where you know I'm particularly attuned to the frog calls, um, that you know while I have focused on the diurnal frogs, the nocturnal frogs are much more common. But two in the morning, there's very little frog call. The the so-called nocturnal frogs tend to start calling um, around dusk, and they um, and so near the tropics, you call it basically six a.m. to six p.m. is is daytime. So they'll start calling around six p.m. or so. Um, by midnight, they're pretty much done. And then you'll start hearing uh, maybe some of them again around 5 a.m. or so. So if you wake up and there's no frog call at all, you know at least you're sort of in the middle of the night, in the in the depth of the night. Yep. 